Thank you all for coming out. Uh, like Dale said, all these in instrument, instruments are made from junk, and we'll play a couple tunes, and then I'll tell you about them. To the west highway road, Lord have mercy on my poor soul. What you gonna do with your baby? Oh, I miss my blue-eyed baby. Well, for all, 
all of these, and I make them out of local woods. This is a local cherry right here, and I know a couple of folks with sawmills, and they saw the logs up, and I go pay them money and get the logs, and that's, that's, that's how I make my next. This next one is an old bluegrass song, but we don't bluegrass it up too much. It's called Black Eyed Susie. Back here it says, what does it say? Oh, sorry. No, oh, back here. Oh. What's well, gone now? <laughs> but it used to say, it used to say, pineapple glacé. So I guess they used to pack jars of pineapple glacé in a box and ship it out. Anyway. It smells nice. It doesn't smell nice. <laughs> Never seen a glossy pineapple. Glossy pineapple. <laughs> so Josh is going to play his pineapple mandolin and sing the song, which is it's a good song, but it's a bad idea. It's called Whiskey for Breakfast. <laughs>
drinking long, said long enough to be singing this song. Lord, was there the same protectors? We've been drinking whiskey for breakfast. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, too. It kind of sounds like this. So it has kind of its funky, beery tone. <laughs> but, so I decided to go ahead and put some electronics into it. I'm not good with electronics. Every time I try to solder something, I burn myself with a soldering iron. And I do have some recent burn marks on my hands, but it sounds different. Uh, with the amplification, so let's see. All right, so there's um, there is the beer can with a with a little amplifier, and since this was dirt farm brewing, um, I decided to go ahead and play a song called "The Old Dirt Poor Old Dirt Farmer," right? Uh, written by Tracy Schwartz of the New Lost City Ramblers. Credit where credit is due for songwriters. Lost all his cars. 
fields of southern Maryland, the flute was considered a girl's instrument. <laughs> so I got a whole lot of, um, I'll say, compliments, compliments about <laughs> playing the flute. <laughs> and uh, that's what actually led me to guitar, because I was tired of folks making crude jokes about my flute playing. So I said, that's, that's it. The Rolling Stones, the Beatles, all those folks were coming out. So I said, I'm going to play the guitar. So. Now, th there's a double-edged sword there because my parents were classical musicians. So they said, oh, you want to play the guitar? They signed me up for classical guitar lessons. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to play. I wanted to rock and roll. But anyway, after I got a little older, Jethro Tull came out on the rock and roll scene. So Ian Anderson was a rock and roll flute player. And I said, okay, it's cool again. So I started playing flute, and then when I, I got out to West Virginia, I started hearing some folks like, Jess Agnew back here playing the penny whistle. And I said, well, that's not too different from the flute. So, of course, I had to make homemade penny whistle. And this one's out of a half-inch copper plumbing pipe. Oh. Left over from me fixing pipes under the house. Oh. So the half-inch is kind of a high-pitched thing. So let's get the microphone away from me. And we'll play a tune called St. Anne's Reel.
just playing that brought back some of the crude jokes this <laughs> So anyway, I said, well, that turned out pretty good. I made a couple of these, and I sent them off to a couple of folks um, who thought they sounded good, and they purchased them, and I said, well, but it's, they're hard to make. And so for 12 bucks, you can get a perfectly good Irish penny whistle called Walton's or Oak Penny Whistle, and they sound almost as good as mine, but for, for less than 20 bucks, you can get a really nice one. You're still $11.99 over asking price, right? Have you, have you, <laughs> have you priced copper lately? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I decided, well, that's kind of shrill sounding, so I made, took some three quarter inch plumbing <laughs> pipe and made this low whistle, and the low whistle has kind of a spookier sound, I think. So I'm going to play a kind of a spookier sound of American hymn. I guess it's a hymn. It's called Borway Frank Stranger. So anyway, the uh, the skillet has been turned into a banjo. Let's see, what, what can I help? traps animals. Sometimes he gets paid because he traps uh, pest animals to the farmers. He, uh, coyotes, he traps those. Sometimes groundhogs. And this is actually, I'm not sure if it's a groundhog hide, but he told me it's from a small mammal. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't press him for details. That's pretty close. So this is since this is an old frying pan, I'm going to play this song from Uncle Dave Macon called Skillet, Good and Greasy. Two, three, four. 
Cigar boxes are some of my favorite things to make instruments with because um, they actually sound pretty close to um, what you call a standard instrument. And uh, of course, in Ben's hands, pretty much every, everything sounds good. So thank you, Ben. Thank you for coming out. switch instruments around because most of the folks here uh, play more than one instrument. Yeah. <laughs> so Josh is going to sing a song from a rock and roll past death. It was actually a Hank Williams Sr. song that George Thorogood did a version of. So yeah, you go, man. Hold on a second. I save money by buying cheap tuners, so that's, that's part of the song. My old lady won't let me in. Well, move it on over. Rock it on over. Rock it on over. Move it on over. The little dog, the big old dog, moving in. She changed the lock on the back door. Now my knee won't fit no more. Well, move it on over. Move it on over. Rock it on over. Rock it on over. Move it on over. Move it on over. Give me one, Jim. 
walking on down the road. Soon I'm squirming just like a toad. Well, moving on over, moving on over, rocking on over, rocking on over. Moving on over. saxophone player and he played with Chubby Checker and Chubby Checker was on uh, I think it was a David Letterman show or something like that and the saxophone player they told him well if you put a microphone in front of your face you get paid extra scale weight wages so you get paid like twice as much if you have a microphone in front of your face so he said they asked him do you need a vocal mic he said sure yes I need a vocal mic and he didn't say he just played saxophone so he got paid double and Barry <laughs> you ain't get paid double <laughs> Jim, what do they pay if you put it somewhere else? <laughs> 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 I'm trying to do a little bit of stuff. Committed to fire. Were you? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a. You're your own punchline. <laughs> <laughs> this is a ukulele, and it's also built on a cigar box. And usually ukuleles are associated with kind of happy, bouncy songs. So what I like to do is play sad <laughs> murder ballads on the ukulele. <laughs> I'm actually not sure if the woman in this song gets murdered, but something happens to her. So this is called Cold Rain and Snow.
I married me a wife, gave me trouble all my life, drove me out in the cold rain and snow, rain and snow. reasons and it's called Clifftop and at Clifftop they have fiddle contests, banjo contests, band contests and they also have a new song contest. So I entered, we entered, this is with Dakota, Dakota Carp was playing fiddle with us at the time and hay fever. it was hay fever so we entered the new song contest and we played that song and kind of just walked off and back to our camps and everything. Next thing I know, they're announcing the winners, and they had to come, Steve Ritz had to come <laughs> find me, and Steve's in here. Steve said, hey, they're calling your name, and Steve's been known to play pranks on people before, so. <laughs> so I said, yeah, right, Steve. They said, no, no, really, they're calling your name, so I went on up to the stage, and sure enough, we had one best uh, original composition song with, with that song. So I was, But we're having Cliff Top again this year, so uh, I, I'm looking forward to that. Jim, before you got that award, had you known you composed it? <laughs> I kind of stole the words from uh, from the statue that's up there. The, oh. Yeah, because those, those words, the first verse is like statue blazing of Statue of Liberty. Yeah, so. Anyway. We forgive each other. Thank you. <laughs> and I stole the second verse from the Bible, so. <laughs> and I had to do that because, no, I'm not going to tell you that story. <laughs> anyway, my sister is really religious, and uh, I figured, well, at least this song will make her happy if I put something from, from the Bible in there. And, uh, and it worked. She liked the song. <laughs> anyway, 
we're gonna we're gonna play this next song and take a take a short break. During the break, I think they're gonna be drawing the winners for the people who filled out the surveys. Usually, they just have one winner, um, but I have brought a pair of spoons. We're gonna have two winners tonight. So a pair of spoons. Oh, I'll tell you what, can you play a song so I can demonstrate how the spoons work? In case you've never heard <laughs> rhythm spoons, um, they're basically a chunk of chunk of wood that I sh kind of shaped into spoons. You can't eat with them. I guess you could stir soup with them. What do you think? Okay, that's good. Whichever winner, this this set of spoons. All right, so let's play one more. This is called "Make Me Down a Pallet." <coughs> I thought you had two winners planned out, so they couldn't do that. I thought you were going to get one spoon. Uh, you have to split them in half. So they could go home and yeah. <laughs> and know their parents. They, you should you should see my wife when I start practicing spoons. It's not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Make me down a pallet on your floor Make me down a pallet on your floor Won't you make me down a pallet on your floor So I can sleep when I got nowhere to go Don't you that woman where I stayed last night Don't you tell that woman where I stayed last night Don't you tell
short break, short break right now. They're going to be drawing, drawing a couple of winners, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. A lot of this is conjecture, but some of it is backed up by evidence, like drawings on cave walls and stuff <laughs> like that. So if you kind of transport yourselves back in time 10, 15, 20,000 years ago, when most of the folks, most of the humans, were hunter-gatherers, and at one time, to hunt their game, they would use a bow. Let me get out here so I don't hurt any of my bandmates. Right, so they'd be stalking their prey <laughs> and see a tasty morsel. Let's see, I don't want to hit anybody, but so they would fire their weapon and ah, got it. Uh, it's got them. But after they had uh, hunted and gathered, they I kind of conceived that they were sitting around the fire. And one of the hunters, or maybe together, took the bow and just was idly tapping on it. He kind of liked the sound, the vibrations. If you're in a cave, that might have been a nice reverberation. And then one of the folks said, well, let's see what happens if I do this. And so they... mouth <laughs> could make the most noise. So I guess somebody got these wheels turning in their brain and they thought, okay, I've got something bigger than that guy's mouth. So natural materials, uh, you probably know what that is. A gourd. So they kind of would take something. I've done this with turtle shells too, but I can't find a turtle shell big enough to make an impact. So now, without the gourd, with the gourd, right. So it's starting to look like um, starting to look like a string instrument. And then, I guess, as the years went by, they thought to themselves, "Well, okay, well, I can put." another string on there and make more sounds. And by this time it had evolved past a hunting implement and into a musical implement. Hold that for me please, Barry. So I put two strings on this stick right here. It's just a regular stick. It's not in very good tune. Actually, I like that. Okay, so the stick itself, without the resonating chamber, in this case a gourd, kind of quiet. With it. Every instrument, all the ones I make especially, are like taking this idea and seeing what you can do with it. So it's basically a stick and some strings, or sometimes one string, and a resonating chamber. And a resonating chamber could be a gourd, or a cigar box, or a beer can, or whatever you have available. And that's the gist of what I like to do, is take whatever is available, and especially if it's something that usually gets thrown away, I take that and I get a certain amount of pleasure out of taking a throwaway object and making music with it. Thank you for listening to my talk. from a cave in France, I think it was Lascaux, France, the cave art, famous cave art there, and there's a fellow 
dressed in animal skins, and the rest of the drawing had a hunting party, and they were holding their bows the normal way, and this fella actually had the bow up to his mouth. So there's some evidence that it was being used for that back, they say, 15,000 years ago, and probably before that, too. Okay. We don't have to on our wardrobes. <laughs> animal skins, yeah. Yeah, a coonskin cap. <laughs> probably Back to the music. Back to the show. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, usually after I do that, I forget where I am. I go, oh, what song's next? So I told you that Paul, my friend Paul, is a trapper, and this may or may not be a groundhog hide. So this next song is called Groundhog. He should have looked left, he should have looked right, he didn't 
see the station wagon car. The skunk got squashed and there you are. You got your dead skunk in the middle of the road. Dead skunk in the middle of the road. You got your dead skunk in the middle of the road. Sneak in the high heaven. interior door. So that's what that, that wood is from. The cookie tin came from the thrift shop. But this, this he had trouble with this one because it was made to be played as an upright bass. Barry's got a big guy, so he's holding it in his uh, lap playing it. And he said, this thing's kind of hard to play. But he's going to play it on this next one. And oh yeah, the strings on this are weed whacker strings, different gauge weed whacker strings. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the low E string, I couldn't find a weed whacker string thick enough for that. Yeah, so, too bad. <clears throat> so the, the low E string is a piece of clothesline from Walmart, plastic on clothesline. And hey, I mean, it sounds pretty good. It's just like a little too big to handle something like that. But can you play it on this next tune? Sure, I've been on it. Once I knew a 
preacher preached the Bible through and through. He went down to deep hell. Now his preaching days are through. Slap you in the face. So she had a bunch of these leftover um, olive oil cans. So I said, well, don't throw them away. And she said, well, I was going to recycle them. I said, well, just give me a couple and let me recycle them. So this is a Botticelli olive oil can. And once again, this is a kind of a quiet one. So I'm going to have to plug it in and see if I can make it a little bit louder. <laughs> Call this because I made up my own tuning for it. 
So I'm going to call it, I'll just lump it under the Kanjo category. All right, so this is one called Sandy Boys. Two, three, four. Bass was too too big, and uh, he was having it was cumbersome. That, that's the word, cumbersome and awkward. So he yeah, so he said, "Can you make me a, another one that's not so big?" So I said, "Sure, Barry. I got time for that. I'm not doing anything. I only have the ukulele club every other Saturday, and the first Friday jam sessions at the co-op. But yeah, I'll make you one." So anyway, this one is made closer to the scale of a normal bass, a Fender bass, and the body is a silverware, a silverware box, I think, uh, yeah, silverware came in it. So I scaled it down to make it more comfortable to play. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have that bow over there? I put it on your, okay. put it on your stand. So speaking of cumbersome, this is a, well, I almost hate to play fiddle when, when I'm sitting close to Ben, because Ben's such a darn good fiddle player, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to try my best. This one's called Cumberland Gap. <laughs>
Hear him talk. Well, that just gave my heart. 
All right, we're going to attempt this one.
dress on a pretty little girl Blue dress on the shoes across the water Stay all night, don't go home Stay all night, don't go home Stay all night, don't go home Stay with me to the morning Put up to my knees 